Hmm. All right, problem one, we have the heights and inches for the 200 graduating seniors from Washington High School are summarized in the frequency table below. We got the height going from 60 to 78 inches, broken down into five groups. Frequency to the amount of um, the number of individuals in each um, group. So which of the following statements about the median height is true? Okay, so the median height, let's recall what the median height is. It's basically the 50 percentile. So the median height would be like the middle value. So since um, there's 200, I like to think of it as like a ranking. What would be like the 100th, 100th, where would like the 100th or 101, like tallest person be in this, you know, in this distribution? So there's 22 in here, and there's 84 in here. That means that's gonna be a total of 106. So that means the 100 or the 101 person is gonna be in this group right here. The median is gonna be in here. We don't know exactly where, but we just can say that their the median height is basically between 60 and is it six between 60 inches, but less than 66 inches. So um, let's look which one of these would work. So it's not going to be greater than 78 inches. Um, not greater than 72. Greater than or equal to 66, but less not that one. Greater than or equal to 60, but less than 66. So yeah, the answer would be D. Oops, I fall in that category. All right, number two, Professor James gave the same test to his three sections of stats students on the 25, on the 35 question test, the highest score was 32 and the lowest was 15. Based on the information displayed in the box plot above, which of the following statements is true? Okay, so we have section one, section two, and section three. These, remember, are outliers. Um, usually a computer um, will print them out um, according to some formula. If it, they lie, usually more than 1.5 standard deviation or 1.5 IQR units. 1.5 times IQR units below Q1 or above Q3. They'll usually mark it with like an asterisk or in this case pluses. So which of these would be true? Section one has the smallest interquartile range. No, the, th the interquartile range is remember the difference of the distance from Q1 to Q3 or this length here. It's not gonna be section one because this one, section two has the smallest IQR. So not A. The lowest score in section two is higher than the highest score in either of the other sections. So the lowest score in section two is over here and it's not that's not going to be, you know, correct. I assume they were trying to probably get you to think about this one. So it's not two, or it's not B. C, section two has the smallest range of scores. Um, no, because remember, these count as a value. So the range goes all the way from here to here. So it's not going to be C. The top 25% the top 25% of scores in section two are lower than the highest score in section three. The top 25% of scores in section two would be right here. And the highest score in section three is right here. So it's pretty close, but it's not gonna be D either. And E, so it's gonna be E, but let's just go over it. At least 50% of the scores in section three. So at least 50% of the scores starting here are higher than all the scores in section one. Yeah, because if you look at the 50 percentile on section three, that is indeed is higher than the max in section one. So the answer is E. Three, a well-designed experiment should have which of the following characteristics? Subjects randomly assign treatments. That's, that has to have, that has to be a component, a control group or at least two treatment groups. Yeah, because you have to test something. You're trying to test the effect of something. And three, your application. It has to have all three of these at least um, to be good experiments. So it would be one, two, and three. So it would be E. All 
All right, for the distribution of colors of candies in a bag is as follows. So we have brown, red, yellow, green, and orange, according to these proportions. If two candies are randomly drawn from the bag with a replacement, what is the probability that they are the same color? Okay, so with replacement, meaning that you're gonna put the candy back. So in other words, like what's the probability of getting two browns or two reds or two yellows or two greens or two oranges? Now, what I would just do is just remember if you're gonna put the um if you're gonna put the um candy back, that means the probability of so it's just, it's just for example, let's say we want to get two brown candies. The probability of drawing a brown candy at one, one, the first on the first straw is 0 0.3, but if you put it back, the probability of drawing a brown candy brown candy on the second draw is still gonna be 0 0.3 because it's back in the bag, it's just replaced. So the probability of drawing a brown candy and a brown candy will be 0 0.3 times 0.3. But you could also draw a red and a red. So using that same idea, it's 0.2 times 0.2, or a yellow and a yellow, which is 0.2 times 0.2 as well. All these are 0.2 times 0 0.2, but 0 0.2 with the multiplication rule. Or drawing two oranges in a row, 0.1 times 0.1. Now, since any of these will satisfy drawing two candies of the same color, um, you want to add these probabilities together. So you use your calculator. And cranking that out, you'll get that the answer is 0.22. And so your answer will be B. All right, each of 133 children in a sample was asked to choose a pencil. Three different colors were available, yellow, red, and blue. The number of two-year-olds and three-year-olds who selected each color is shown in the table above. In a test of independence of age and color, which of the following is used as the expected cell count for two-year-olds who select a yellow pencil? Okay, so uh, memory expected counts. Um, there's actually like a, a, a simple formula or rule you can use um, where you would have the expected count be equal to the row total times the column total divided by the overall total. This is in dealing with the concepts of the chi-square um, distribution that you usually learn towards the end of your that's course, it's chapter 11 in my course. Um, so again, you could use this simple formula. The logic is that you wanna see this entire group. This, remember, this is a row and we're talking about three or two and three year olds. And if there was no difference in, you know, how, two, how in the proportion of two year olds that pick yellow candy and three year olds that pick yellow candy or any of the other color candies, then you would simply look at this 14 plus 28. So you would look at that total as the overall proportion over everything. Um, so that's the logic, but in, it looks like they're just, they just have like that formula, like with the multiplication set out. So row total, that's, that's the 14 plus 28. Column total, the, we're looking at, two-year-olds, so we're gonna do the 14, 32, and 19, and overall total, the 133. So the answer will be E.